Hello and welcome back to Start Learning Sets. And as always, I want to thank all the nice people that support this channel on Steady or PayPal. Today in part 7, we will finish our discussion about maps by talking about the composition. Now the idea here is that we simply have two maps. One goes from a set A into a set B and the other one goes from the set B into the set C. However, this means for an element A, you can apply both maps. First you apply F and then you apply G. And the result is then a map from A into C. This one is what we call the composition and is denoted with a little circle between the two maps. So you see, it's not so complicated, hence we can immediately write down the definition. The only things we need are the two maps, where the codomain of the one map is the domain of the other one. And then we can define the new map G circle F from A into C. A better way to read this would be G composed with F or just G after F. Okay, the definition of this map is now given by take an X and put it first into F and then put the result into the map G. And this is what we call the composition from now on. Now as always, it's good to look at examples first. Let's start with a very simple one. So here you see our three sets. The set A has four elements, the set B has two elements and the set C has also two elements. Now the map G should be defined by sending 8 to 9 and 2 to 2. So with these two assignments, G is completely defined. And the map F we want to define by sending any element just to 8. Now the question is, what is the composition G after F? For example, what comes out when we put in the element 1? We already know we start with F, which means from 1 we go to 8 and then we arrive at 9 after applying G. Of course, also for the other inputs, we land at 9 in the end. Here you see, and please keep that in mind, we read the composition from right to left. So we first apply F and then we apply G. In this example, the other way around wouldn't make any sense. However, this changes when all the three sets are actually the same. In the next example, we just take the real numbers R for all the three sets. And I want F to be the function that sends X to X squared. And G should be the function that sends X to the sine of X. Then the composition G after F makes sense and it is given for a point X as X squared inside the sine function. We first square the number and then we apply the sine function. However, in this example, also the other way makes sense, so we can form f after g. Now, if we put an x into this function, we first apply the sine function and then we square the result, which is a totally different function than sine of x squared. So please remember, for the composition, the order matters, and in a general case, the other order does not make any sense at all. If you're still not comfortable with the real numbers here, don't worry, we will go into more details how to construct the number sets in the next videos. And you may have also noticed, if we have a map between the real numbers, we call the map simply a function again. This is just very common and shouldn't confuse you. Okay, now with the knowledge of composition, we can finally explain why we have the term inverse map. However, first I want to talk about a very particular map that we can define for any set A. It's called the identity map and we write ID and put the set A in the index. So it's a map from A into itself and simply defined by sending X to itself. So in the picture, the left hand side and the right hand side are the same and you simply connect the same points. You see, it's one of the simplest maps you can think of. Now, if you consider any other function from A into another set B, the composition identity map after F wouldn't change anything. You would get out F again. On the other hand, if we take a bijective map, we can look at the compositions F with the inverse map. In particular, both orders make sense here because this one is a map that goes from B into B and this one is a map that goes from A into A. More concretely, we get out the corresponding identity maps. 
And these two equalities explain why the name inverse map fits and why the notation f to the power minus 1 is also useful. With respect to the composition, they cancel out, they cancel out to the identity map. Okay, with this I think you now have a good knowledge about sets and maps. Therefore, now we can start learning about numbers. So I hope I see you in the next video and have a nice day. Bye.